Our second speaker grew up in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. He's a, a graduate of uh, communication studies from the University of Calgary, friend TV from, from SAIT. He's an avid pop culture enthusiast and contributor of pop culture, and works multiple jobs, just like a true millennial. <laughs> Please welcome Calvin De Silva. I grew up in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. Um, this picture has nothing to do with my presentation. Um, I just thought a picture of me sandboarding was the best way to represent that. Um, now, I wasn't a very cool kid. Um, I didn't play outside as much, because uh, I grew up in apartments for most of my life. Um, so I spend most of my time watching TV, um, and movies, and occasionally reading books. Um, <laughs> I'm particularly fond of the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. None of this was a trial, though. Um, I had a pretty easy childhood. However, I never learned how to ride a bike. And um, all the way until I moved to Canada. And then at the age of 25, I decided to give it a shot. Um, I had help from a friend of mine, Jesse Mully. Um, now, it is important that you know just who Jesse Mully is before I can continue with the story. Um, Jesse's the type of person who can't come out because he's too busy pickling eggs. Um, it's a true story. Um, he's the type of guy who you have to buy a gift card to Michael's because all he's done over the last year is obsess over making felt puppets. Um, he's a weirdo in just the most wonderful way. Um, you know, he's got a childlike sense of wonder an active imagination and a very generous heart, uh, and I love him deeply. Um, so he was going to help me learn to ride this bike. And uh, we did it over four days, and little did I know I would be embarking on my own unexpected journey. <laughs> Much like Bilbo Baggins in J.R.R. Tolkien's masterpiece, The Hobbit. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. But it's, uh, <laughs> It's actually the title of the first chapter. <laughs> Anyways, um, so on day one, Jesse tried to teach me about balance and achieving harmony with my bike. Um, I told him he was full of shit. Uh, because I, I had a hard time balancing on my own two feet, let alone two wheels, so I spent most of the day stumbling around, and I didn't feel like I had accomplished much by the end of it, so I didn't have high hopes going into day two. Um, but Jesse persevered. Uh, we went to Fish Creek. Um, he pushed me, uh, gently encouraging me to focus on balance. He told me I had to overcome my innate fear of failing in order to succeed. Um, and I responded by cursing at the top of my lungs. Um, see, my friends have always told me that I had a really quick temper, uh, and, I never, and I never really understood it until that day. Um, you know, I guess it really frustrated me that I was unable to do something that children did so easily. Um, I was totally dejected, um, much like the dwarves were um, at the end of the second Hobbit movie, uh, The Desolation of Smaug. When they were stretched to their physical and emotional limits, they watch as the dragon Smaug flies to Lake Town, uh, to the innocent people of Lake Town promising fire and death. Yeah, it's not the best analogy, I know. Um, probably should have gone with Empire Strikes Back, something relatable, but... <clears throat> By the third day, Jesse took a different approach. He decided to take my mind off of riding the bike. Um, now, this part might seem bizarre, but please keep in mind everything I've told you about Jesse so far. Um, he led me to a clearing in the woods, um, and he proceeded to do a bird call. And chickadees started to land on us. <laughs> See, at that moment, I was truly reminded of something bigger and more beautiful than my trial. Um, and by the end of that day, I was able to ride that bike. Um, see, those birds saved me. 
Just like the Eagles saved Frodo and Samwise at the end of the third Lord of the Rings movie, The Return of the King. Uh, I just needed a wizard to summon them, and Jesse, Jesse was my wizard. And uh, if you knew him, you'd know that that's not that far-fetched. Um, so, how did the two of us meet? Um, you might ask at the after party. Um, well, there is no after party, so I'll just answer the question now. Um, I met Jesse at the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. We both went to school there uh, for television. I met him along with a few of my closest friends. Uh, these are people who were willing to give their time and energy to help me work on projects that I was passionate about. Um, I realized that my friends have helped me through trial for most of my life. Um, and riding a bike was no different. When I needed help, Jesse was eager to teach me. Um, and my friend Nathan was eager to make a documentary about it. Um, it's not, not very helpful, but um, it was a really great documentary. It's where I got all these photos from, in case you were wondering. Um, uh, Nathan called it the psychology of biking, um, and he spelt it psychology of biking. Uh, Um, the doc screened at a few festivals, even won a few awards, but to me the most noteworthy one was winning the Audience Choice Award at the Roanoke Bike Shorts F Festival in Roanoke, Virginia, um, which is a film festival themed entirely around cycling. Who knew? Um, a reviewer from the Martinsville Bulletin wrote, filled with comedic twists and turns, the audience laughed out loud at Molly's one-liners and De Silva's multiple complications. Um, now, as a young man growing up in this, uh, as a young man working in the media, this industry itself can be a bit of a trial. Um, I've worked with professionals who are jaded and miserable, um, but psychology of biking is the proudest I've ever been um, in content I've had some part in making. In helping me through my trial, my friends created something that motivated us to continue creating content and to tell more stories just like this one. So I wanted to take the last 20 seconds uh, just to thank my friends who have helped me on my projects and for inspiring me to try new projects. Their names are on this slide and they're all here today, so I wanted to share this round of applause with them. Um, sorry, ex except for Jeff Goldblum who couldn't be here today. 